I appreciate the build up and uh, balancing that out for me because it's all about balance. I'm sure as it goes today, if anyone is out there joining Ollie and Mark and you're starting your break with PD, hats off to you. Much respect. Um, I think anyone who's willing to do it is awesome. Anyone who's willing to start their holiday with it, even better. Um, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be uh, not using a bunch of slides. So you are going to see me um, for a few, a few more minutes than maybe you want to. Um, but I'll try to make it as meaningful as possible. And Ollie, I'm going to call you in um, later. And Mark, you can join um, as well, because I do want to run something live and see if we can um, make something happen in real time. Uh, to start off, I am going to be talking about leadership, middle leadership, and actually about the role of questions when you're talking to people, but actually the key of listening to people, um, listening to the people who you are trying to lead, and actually give you a few steps that I've learned in my relatively short time as a middle leader. I'm a middle leader at Raha International School in Abu Dhabi, part of the Talim family. And I've been a middle leader of the specialist, head of specialist early years in primary music and visual arts for the past three years. Um, and it starts, let's go to my background just for a second. I'll do it quickly. I'm a Canadian educator, um, trained at Queen's University, homecoming today. Boom, hats off to Queen's and everybody celebrating homecoming virtually right now. And uh, I graduated in 2006, flew over to Hong Kong and did education and education related activities for 10 years. I could get into that, but I already did on a podcast or a chat with uh, Ollie and Mark before. So I'll put the link in Twitter. Um, did stuff there. And in 2015, flew out here with my family to Abu Dhabi to start working at the amazing Raha International School. And I'm not bigging it up just for the sake of it, it's true. And I hope there are some people out there because I saw Kai had his own hashtag. I'm a little bit jealous of that. Um, so let's get the epic Raha out there, people, if you're watching. And if you're not, throw it up there anyways, because I'll feel lonely if you don't. So that's a little bit about my background. Now, to get into leadership, the first thing, of course, anyone needs to think about is like, what does that mean to someone? Like, what, what do you define being a leader as? And I think Whatever that is, you'll take a little bit from what I'm saying um, in a certain way, because I can't tell everyone how it is that actually they feel leadership is to them. And I think that's where it starts. But for me, leadership is about three things. Um, and at this point, I probably could have had a little PowerPoint to say those three words beside me, kind of like uh, Governor Como or something, little bullet points. Um, so it would be relationships, um, Kai said that, uh, connecting with people, um, communication and support. And my main talk is going to be about that last one, support. And it's hard to support people if you don't have the first two. So relationships and good communication with those people and then support. And with support, I like to frame it into three things and it has the same acronym so you can kind of remember it. Um, it's C, it's a D, and it's an I. I have my birthday girl daughter um, trying to join in with the chat right now. Don't worry, I got rid of her. Uh, <laughs> the first one is you cannot see deliberately interrupt. And it goes to the idea, idea of listening to people. And if you can remember that, just you cannot deliberately interrupt. When you're chatting with people, you can of course, let it flow, just like you have in a podcast, just like you have in a conversation. If something comes up in real time that's meaningful to something, I suggest you share that with the person. However, during the moments, um, as Simon Sinek would say, or someone around, the, around that kind of group, don't be thinking of your next point of chatter while someone else is talking. You can actively listen. However, if there is something you need to say, say it if it's, if it's natural. But cannot deliberately interrupt. And with the same C is the model I love to work with leadership, with listening to people and helping them grow is asking them this question first. So grab your pen. Um, it's gonna be groundbreaking moment. No, um, the first one is what is your ideal in the situation? So someone comes to you, they have 
Uh, I'm trying to start this initiative at the school. I'm trying to get people motivated on this. They said, okay, that's amazing. Can you tell me what is your idea? What is this gonna look like? Give me the best case scenario. And then they, they lay it out for you. They get a kind of clearer idea of actually what they see that picture looking like at the school. You say, okay, great, you're still listening. What is it currently right now? And then they tell you, all right, it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult because it's harder in the senior school, as you heard Kai say, it's harder in the senior school. I can't get it over there right now. Um, and there's, there's roadblocks with uh, some parents or with some colleagues who have been there already and the students don't just jump into it right away. Okay, okay. So what can you do from right now to try to get to that idea? What do you think you can do? And along that way, I'll try to help you to see if I can get any of those roadblocks out of the way in the doing part. So we have the C for cannot. So we have what's the current situation. We have the deliberately, cannot deliberately, the D, what can we do? And then interrupt, what's the ideal? Just if you're trying to link the listening acronym to this one. So ideal, current, and what can we do to bridge that gap? And that's been groundbreaking or life-changing for me as a middle leader. When I'm sitting down and I'm talking to people, I can remind myself, you cannot deliberately interrupt because I love to hear my own ideas. And sometimes as a middle leader or as a senior leader, if you say something, you don't maybe understand how much of an impact that can have on changing someone else's perspective. So cannot deliberately interrupt and then ask them, what's your ideal? What's the current situation? And now how can we work together to do those things to bridge the gap? And hopefully I can get rid of any of those barriers. So Ollie or Mark, if you could jump in, join me right now so I'm not sitting alone in my own green room, um, I would appreciate that. Oh, both of you, how dare you? Now that, that was, we were struggling because we, after what you just said, we really did not want to deliberately interrupt you. you oh, see? So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let flow. <laughs> see, I like that. So you got the first part. You were listening. You were you were really intently listening, or you know, uh, listening to Ollie talk about his love for milk and coffee. I had to bring it up, Ollie. Sorry, I said I would. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, what I would like to do now is chat with you guys um, and go through a leadership model that I just said with, with the audience uh, and they can see kind of how it works and kind of the dialogue. And the conversation I would like to have is, what is the ideal situation do you guys feel for teachers jumping into social media? Like what is the ideal thing that they can get out of coming, you know, encouraging your staff to get into social media get onto Twitter, get onto all these platforms, do PD like we have today, what would be ideal? Oli, what do you think? What would be ideal if, if you're talking to your colleagues right now and they're all here today? Your microphone's off, Oli. See, this is perfect. <laughs> we were there we go. I think it's about bridging the gap between you know your 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 four walls, as it were, within your school and actually to make better decisions, we need to hear lots of different contexts, not only that are similar to our own, but other, other, other educators' experiences so that we can be better informed in the decisions that we make. So I think, you know, social media is such a powerful tool for that, that it can connect people, you know, across the world. Like we've seen, we've, we've got people tuning in from the USA here now. So I think the power to do that and eliminate the, the kind of boundaries mm -hmm. around our school walls is, is, is such a amazing tool that you know we want teachers and leaders at every level to engage in it um, and and basically learn from other people you know we're learning beings by nature so yeah by sharing you know that that's everything i fully agree with you catherine there thanks for tuning in um you know i think the more that we share the better we can all um do for the students because that's ultimately what it's about isn't it it's about trying to empower staff to then make the best decisions so that the learning opportunities for students are um, as rich and rewarding as possible um, and i think social media is a fantastic tool for that so if, it, if even if it's something as simple as just um you know if someone's really interested in science you know engage in um a twitter chat on at chat biology if you're a biologist and, and hear what other teachers are doing 
um, with res respect to teaching a particular part of their syllabus and, and get ideas, share resources from them. I think that's massively rewarding or something on a slightly larger scale like, like Learn Live UAE today, you know, hear from lots of different educators across the region um, to gauge their their experiences because, you know, you're a massive advocate for sharing your story and the more stories we hear, um, the better that helps us inform our own story. I, I totally hear you. I think where I'm driving it even more so is if I look at the big picture of Raha International School about how many teachers are actually on Twitter actually using what you just spoke about as you know the reasons to be here and all those benefits you get for being online. Yeah. I think it's a really small group, unfortunately. Um, and my ideal at Raha would be, you know, every middle leader, everyone in senior leadership actively going on engaging with you know collab uae and these people within the community louvre abu dhabi when they make posts if you're in the arts you know actually going on and making it part of uh part of the situation so mark i, I guess to end it with you i know i don't have too much time you're in you're in the i don't want to say the war zone but i see when you go in to talk to people about getting into social media and talking about that power um Tons of people jumped onto Twitter after, um, obviously, your inspirational chats with, with them about the power of social media. What do you see the current state right now with, you know, new graduates starting, uh, starting a career in education or even um, people that you see when you go into schools? What is the current situation? Am I wrong in thinking that a lot of people, you know, that it is a small percentage of these schools actually engaging in this useful platform? You're not wrong, Mark, um, you know, and, and that's something that's really important, I think, for teachers who use Twitter to remember that, that Twitter isn't, isn't everything. And actually, whilst there are many tens of thousands of educators who use Twitter for really powerful reasons, um, I, you know, I share about Twitter being you know, far better for teachers than a Google search when it comes to wanting to find resources. The replies you get are contextual, they're, 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 they're relevant, they're just for you. You know, it's a superb platform, but the reality is um, that it is a microcosm compared to the actual total size of the teaching workforce. That said, we have seen a massive rise uh, in the use of um, Twitter in particular, um, social media, uh, since we've, we entered the pandemic. And I think that's because there's been a real need for teachers to actually, because they've been, a lot of teachers have been dropped in at the deep end. Um, you know, sink or swim in terms of using technology and these sort of things. And um, with with the advocates like us three, for example, sharing, you know, if, you, if you're looking for some really current help, support, advice about X, Y and Z around all of this stuff, get yourself on Twitter. I think that's had a massive impact on, on, on where we are at right now. Um, you know, the, the, the work I do in schools is often supporting teacher confidence and competence. Um, and uh, and it bringing yourself onto Twitter is a great way and an easy way, actually, of starting to connect and, and, and familiarize yourself and learn about all these these amazing things that, that you can actually do with technology. So, yeah, you, I, I completely agree. It's a real microcosm. Um, and I'm just going to go back to what you're talking about and sharing today, Mark, because what you do really, really well, going back to your model that you're sharing, you know, your body language really represents that you're, you're actively listening and that's so important in the conversation when you're working with others trying to lift them up getting them feel like they're able to share stuff you know showing that and and, yeah. and really really get to it and being interested in is a, you need to remember so you know I, i'm gonna have to interrupt you here for a second you need to remember <laughs> i was an actor at one point in time so don't let me fool you <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once and uh, fool me twice. <laughs> but um, I have to say, guys, I, I think what you're doing, I can't shout this out enough, how amazing it is what you guys are doing. And we're, that I, I brought that little idea in kind of, it was kind of a setup in the sense that mm -hmm. I wanted to get to the fact that the current state is, you know, a little bit underwhelming, but could have that possibility, especially in the UAE, to get to that ideal where those middle leaders are on there, those senior leaders are on there, and people are actively all over Twitter and the actual, what can we do to bridge the gap is this right now, is exactly what you guys are doing um, on YouTube, streaming it live on Twitter. People don't have to register, they can just join in, contribute, learn. This is the way to do it. You guys have, you're totally leading the way. I'm going to constantly share this idea with other people and say, you gotta get on with these guys and we need to make more opportunities 
to grow this kind of platform. So Lou Abu Dhabi, if you're listening, Alan Williamson with the Talim Group, we need to grow this, this platform. This is the way to bridge the gap from the current state to the ideal. I truly feel that. And yeah, so if anyone can take anything away from this, it's twofold for me. Number one, you cannot deliberately interrupt, even though I give bad examples of it at times. And number two, find your ideal, share the current situation with your middle leaders and find a way to bridge that gap together. And when you're bridging that gap, make sure you're listening. And as Mark says, when you're listening, really show that you're listening and that you're actively engaging in the conversation. I think it's so, so key. Um, and yeah, we need to work together and you guys are amazing. I appreciate you involving me in this um, and even tweaking around the schedule. So if some people saw on the schedule that it wasn't fitting, uh, my apologies to everyone who's tuned in. Uh, it was my daughter's uh, birthday weekend and all this, Never mind. Um, I, I appreciate you accommodating me and everyone who's tuned in. I hope you enjoyed and got something from my little spiel about listening and leadership. That's what I got. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, we've had some lovely comments in the side here. Um, Gigi has said, uh, I have a Twitter account I don't really use. Who should I follow on Twitter to learn and start? Uh, so we're, we're very short on time. And uh, but, um, have a look on my website, ictevangelist.com. I've got some huge periodic tables uh, of people to follow on Twitter. Uh, search at Mr. Yeah. Andy Price. He's got a lovely infographic for educators in the UAE who are on Twitter as well. Sorry, Mark. No, um, I'm not trying to interrupt. Um, I think it's uh, it's key for everyone. Also, when you're joining, you're trying to follow people. You, you don't need to follow a person. You know, you can follow kind of what Ollie was saying. Like, what are you looking for? Is it you're looking for a science angle? Go through a hashtag, see what people are on about, and you will find the people that you start resonating with. And if you're in a community like Collab UAE or something, there's there's hashtags for all these groups with Australian, you know, pub Asia or whatever it is that people get together and there's tons. So try to find uh, that group, not that person. Um, or, you know, jump onto Joe Rogan. He's always funny. That's it, find your tribe, isn't it? That's so important to do as well yeah. alongside everything else. Uh, yeah. look, Mark, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Enjoy your daughter's birthday party. Thank you so much. Last thing I need to say to everybody here. So I am going to be celebrating this weekend. I'm going to celebrate the success that you guys are going to be having live UAE. So when I order my room service tonight at the Conrad downtown in Abu Dhabi, I'll be thinking about you guys. All right. Thanks, Fish Mark. And chips. Fish and chips Thank on me. Thank you so much, Mark. Brilliant stuff. Thank you.